Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today I thought I'd give you a little break from all the Alps and Pyrenees content with the Porsche Cayman and do a full review of the Porsche Cayman. Now obviously if you've been watching the channel for the past couple of months or so you've seen that we have gone around the Alps and the Pyrenees mountains in this car so I've spent many many miles getting used to it finding out all these flaws and all this good side but honestly I haven't found any bad sides. So as the name suggests, the GTS 4.0 means it has the four litre flat six engine, the same four litre flat six engine that is in the GT4. Now, this car is basically a GT4 without the wing. Obviously there's a few more specific details and technicalities that go that make it not a GT4. Like the suspension setup is slightly different. The engine is exactly the same, but it's slightly detuned. So it has 400 horsepower rather than 420 that you get in a GT4, but the torque figures are exactly the same as 420 Newton meters in both cars. I think just because it's mapped slightly differently, differently, the torque figures on the curve on the graph are very slightly different. So I think if you were racing them back to back on a track, you'd probably figure out where the torque is and get a feeling for it. But I think out on the road, you're not going to make a dif notice a difference. The only difference you'd probably really notice aesthetically would be the lack of big wing on the back that you get with the GT4. Now this GTS does have the pop-up wing at the back. So if you go over a certain speed or you put it in Sports Plus or you hold the button uh, to pop up the wing manually, you, depending on how you configure it, yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's a little wing, but it's a little car. So it's nice and subtle and it suits it very well. But if you want the same horsepower as a GT4, if the car's out of warranty, you could just always remap it. A remap on these engines, they're always detuned anyway, so you could probably get 440 easy, easily out of it. So 420 to match a GT4 shouldn't be an issue. Now this one is finished in Arctic grey, which is kind of basically like a, a Nardo grey, I guess, if you know Audis and stuff like that. But it's pretty much the same. I, I can't see any real differences. Um, tiny little bit of flake in the paintwork when the sun comes out, which is really nice. Can't show you today, obviously. Uh, sat in black, 20 inch wheels as standard. I think on the 718s, it's normally a 19 inch wheel. You can spec 20s, but 20s come as standard on this car. As well as the four litre flat six, this is coupled up to a PDK and you can get a manual, but we've gone for the PDK option and a PDK is a PDK, you, they're pretty hard to beat, they're always going to perform brilliantly and this one does just as, good, just as well. Now despite it being a two seater low down sports car, mid engine, rear wheel drive, blah blah blah, it is actually a perfect daily and here's why. Now I'm going to jump straight into sort of the practicality side of things and prove why this would be such a good daily car. So now if we look at the front, or the front bonnet or whatever you want to call it, just how much room is in there. Now, doesn't look like a lot, but I have done this in a video before. Ah, plenty of room to fit me. We can actually close that with me inside it. I'm not going to do that because I'm out on my own. So if something goes wrong and I get locked in here, it's not going to look good and I might be here for a long time. But plenty of room to probably do a week's worth of shopping and fit it all in there. But if that's not enough room for you, there is more. So if we go around to the back of the car, this is one little design issue that I've found. So if you've actually got the spoiler up, where you'd normally lift from the back there is a bit of a pinch point, so you can't get your fingers, so you have to go from the side. Again, no big issue, but we do have more storage for a couple more bags or wherever you want to put in the boot. Little suitcase, little travel case maybe, something like that. You're not going to get a full-on suitcase in here. We, Again, it's a sensible sports car with enough storage to get you by. So, so yeah, you're not going to get a suitcase and everything in there, but it is still sensible enough to a point where we can fit luggage, enough luggage, enough clothes and bags and everything for two men for just under two weeks of traveling around the UK, plus all my camera gear, GoPros, tripods, etc., to fit all around the car and still be comfortable enough. Oh, plus some detailing gear as well, just to go on top of that, just to spruce up the car from day to day. 
plenty of storage. It's actually unbelievable how much they've squeezed out of it. Obviously, there's no engine in the front, so it's perfect. Now, I think I'm going to do it handheld from now on because the wind is picking up and I don't want to have my camera smashing on the floor like it did with the McCann the last time I was out here. Back out with my dad's pull. Oh, so, storage wise in the doors, little pocket there, pair of sunglasses, just about big enough for that. You can't fit drinks, cloths, bits of paper, whatever. 18 way GTS seats are standard, half leather, half Alcantara, very nice, very comfortable. You've got your boot release and your front release. Now this has got the extended leather option as well, so we've got nice leather all down the sides, finished off with a nice carbon trim around the centre console, and along there for the glove box. Just in there, don't know if you can see because the sun is coming out, cup holders as a standard because everyone needs cup holders, they are adjustable, handy, a little bit more storage down there, glove box, pretty reasonable. Reasonable size for the size of the car. PDK gearbox, spoiler, valves open or closed on the exhaust, start stop, traction control, adjustable suspension. Everything you need in a GTS 4.0. Steering wheel, standard configuration across every Porsche, as well as your dials, your trick computer slash map slash g-force meter and your speed and rpms so very standard Porsche layout inside clock your track timer because it's got a chrono pack very nice um, as well as because it's 18-way adjustable seats we've got the memory seat option as well um, as well as usual stuff aircon climate control but yeah, other than that, a bit more basic, but that is where the fun happens. Now, this little cup holder isn't standard. This is actually a 3D printed item from someone in the States, I think, um, because as a standard, you get a little, basically like a little penny tray. And it's not really much use to anyone. So someone's come up with the idea of 3D printed this. You take that out, put that in, much more useful. We do the more fun bit. Not too much detail today. It's a Porsche. You know what it does? And if you don't know what it does, watch my Alps and Pyrenees videos and you'll see exactly what it was made for. Sport Plus, valves open, start stop off, obviously. Just gonna come to a stop and just do this once. <laughs> oh, that noise, no, no slip, no nothing, not even a little twitch or a cut back on power. So yeah, as well as being a perfect sort of I don't want to say a sleeper car, but it's kind of a sports car that goes a bit under the radar, a bit un, like overlooked. Oh yeah, overlooked is how I would describe it, because people would automatically assume Porsche, Cayman, you go or GT4 or any 911. Really, you wouldn't. You might sort of consider some people would go, oh yeah, GTS 4.0, and I and I think the GTS 4.0 is is the sweet spot. It's, I think if you go GT4, then it bec becomes a bit undailyable. I know some people do and they like it, um, but I think the GTS is probably the now on the head car. But being a Cayman as well, it is it is a go-kart <laughs> the car handles like it's on rails 
it just doesn't go anywhere there's no slip there's no slight little twitchiness I mean there probably would be if you pushed it right to its limit but for our roads I feel like if you drive this car and get yourself into a spot above her where you've lost it or essentially binned it or had a twitchy moment Bumpy. I feel like that would be down to you. Like you've, you're a bit of a pillock, really, because this car would give you plenty of play before it starts to cut you back. Let's see if we get a clear run through here. Now I'm not going to push it. I really do feel like I understand what the car is capable of handling-wise. It grips so much. I just don't trust myself. I'm not saying I'm a bad driver. Again, a little bit greasy, starting to spit, so we'll back it off a little bit. I really do feel sorry for second gear because it's quite a long quite a long ratio gear and that is <laughs> where we spend most of the time in the mountains I feel you couldn't go fast enough to get into seconds with the switchbacks uh, and we've caught us with traffic so yeah, you, could, you couldn't go fast enough to get into third, and every time you did, you was there briefly before dropping it back down. But yeah, it handles like it's on rails. The brakes are brilliant. It comes as, it comes on P0s as standard, so the grip, grip's pretty, pretty good, but you know, everyone would choose Michelin PS4s, PS4Ss. But the brakes, I'll just put it in 45. <laughs> And they're the standard black caliper steel discs, drill, drilled discs. The seats are comfortable, the ride's not too hard, especially for our roads. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a delight to drive, it's not putting too much effort in. Steering wheel is really nice. It can be light at times, like when you when like around town, which is nice. It doesn't feel like a big car, although the car, the bonnet sort of bulges over because of the wheels and the wings, and you can't see a great deal out of the corners because of the size of the pillars down the back. There's still plenty of visibility to do everything that you do day to day. I mean, obviously it comes with parking sensors and everything as well, so if you hit anything, again, you're a bit of a pleb. But, and then on the weekend, you literally, you don't, I'd say at the flick of a button, it, it changes. You don't even have to flick a button. You could just leave it in normal. You don't need to put it in Sport or Sport Plus for, to have fun. Because the PDK gearbox, in, even in normal, is brilliant. The engine and engine response, throttle response is brilliant. Like I said, you can still go out, have a blaster blast out into the country wherever you want to go, and only use a quarter of a tank. I mean, I'm coming to the end of the video. Obviously, you only see 10. Ooh, that was a big pole. Didn't hit. You only see 10 to 15 minutes worth of footage. Five minutes of it would be standing still. But I probably do about 50 miles today worth of driving. I've used a quarter of a tank. Like. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's saying 263 miles of range, but that will go up to 350 easily. 
once I start driving normally again when I go home. If you've got, if you've got the opportunity to buy one, buy one. <laughs> oh, I mean I've driven some good sounding cars in my time but I don't think well I think it's going to be a while until that noise is beaten naturally aspirated flat six I mean the, the baby Porsche isn't a baby Porsche anymore it is a proper Porsche the four, four litre flat six and <laughs> talking about that engine the flat six, four litre flat six in a Cayman and the way the world's going into EVs is this potentially going to make this a good investment car or a good collector's car because it's like they've done one last Porsche have done one last hurrah kind of thing well, we'll, we'll go all out, we'll put the big engine in, a, in the baby car and mm, you know over time they're gonna fade it out and drop drop the engine sizes down to two and a half litres, two pots like most cars are going with hybrid systems or just make it a full on EV. They've already said they're gonna take out a couple of the models from the Cayman range as of 2024, 2025. So you're not gonna get them sounds for too much longer. Unless obviously you want to pay, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 grand on top and go for a 911, whatever variant you want, but they're obviously holding their value pretty well. And the overs on them currently are ridiculous. So is, like I said, is this the perfect all round Porsche? You get all of the goodness, but for say, I don't want to say that cheap price because this was still like 83 grand but compared to a 911 or a GT4 same engine as a GT4 just slightly detuned and when I say slightly detuned 20 horsepower you'll never get bored of that noise this a stock noise so if you're around driving enjoying the countryside Wales Scotland wherever you want to go and there's no radio signal, no phone signal for music, you don't need to worry about that because you will never get bored of this noise. We went 2,000 miles and didn't listen to the radio once. No music, nothing. We just sat back, relaxed, and listened to that noise. And speaking of relaxing, these seats, perfect. You don't need to do anything with them. 18 way seats so comfortable it's not like you sit in it for an hour and after an hour you go oh i've got a numb bum and i want i'm starting to get a bit fidgety nah didn't even think about it just drive along and then before you know it yeah like obviously you get out and you stretch your legs you go oh that feels better to stand up but you do that in any car so yeah i can't stress enough how much porsche have nailed this so I think I'll leave it there. I mean, I've quite enjoyed my morning. It feels like it's been a while since I've done a review. I like to do my reviews like a fairly simple one. I don't like to go too much into it. I like to give you the basics and sort of enjoy the car. I feel like if I'm enjoying the car, it comes across on camera that, that, that you'd enjoy it. So yeah, if you like this video, leave a comment down below on what you think of the car, whether you'd have one or not, whether it be this spec or different spec, I'm always interested and uh yeah like and subscribe and i will see you on the next one very soon